from the same creative team that brought us Andy Muschietti's It and last year's Barbarian. They have a brand new horror film starring Anthony Starr, who is easily the best villain on TV as Homelander, and Lizzie Kaplan, who I am a big fan of. So this movie is going to be great. Or is it? What's going on movie fans and welcome back to my channel, Elliot here with a brand new movie review to talk about the new horror thriller by the name of Cobweb, which will have a limited release in theaters on July 21st. Now I got the opportunity to check it out early before I can give you all my early spoiler free movie review, but before we get into my thoughts, I want to talk to all my horror fans out there. Let me know if this is a film that was on your radar, if you were excited to check it out, and of course once you've seen it, let's talk pros, let's talk cons, but let me know what you all think about the pacing, the actual narrative, the performances. Were you enthralled in the thrilling aspects? Were you scared by the horror elements? What worked? What didn't work? Let's talk about all that in the comments section. So, quick little story before we get into my thoughts. I've been doing this for the last few years regarding I don't like to watch trailers for independent horror films because more times than not, the element of surprise really works for me and a lot of like A24, Neon, you know, Lionsgate, which this is produced by Lionsgate. I like to stay away from trailers for my independent films because the blockbuster trailers give away everything, right? So I didn't watch the trailer for this new movie. I had heard who was making it, who was in front of the camera, which got me excited. But again, I didn't watch any trailers. Reason I say it is because as I'm talking about today's film, I'm going to try to stay away from giving too much away from the plot because the element of surprise is something that I really enjoyed and I want you all to have that same effect. So with that being said, we're going to switch things up in regards to the order of my review. I normally like to start off with the positives, then I get into my negatives, then I get into my overall thoughts and give you my score, which will kind of stick to the script, but I'm going to start off with the negatives this time around and there's a reason behind that. So with that being said, starting off with my cons. I got to be honest, the first 20, 25 minutes, I just wasn't all that invested in the story. And the reason I say that is because it felt too much of the same thing. Now, stick with me here. This movie in the first half is a very cookie cutter horror film that we all have seen before. The narrative, which again, I don't want to give too much away from the plot, but the basic premise is we have an eight year old by the name of Peter, only child, gets picked on on school. He has this situation where one night he hears something behind the wall, he's invested investigating what's behind the wall. He finds out that his parents may not be as innocent or as sweet as he thought because they might have a secret sinister thing that they're hiding from him. So again, I'm going to just keep it there with the plot. But again, it sounds a bit familiar, right? And the first half felt very familiar. You have the kid who his parents are blaming his imagination to what's going on. The parents are ignoring their son's fears, which leads to young Peter acting up at some points in the film. We have family secrets, creepy basement. Is it the young boy's imagination? Is it a ghost? Is it something else entirely? So again, I'm just watching like... Man, is, is anything unique or fresh about that? And again, we'll, we'll keep that to the positives. But again, for the first half, I'm just like, can we, can, we, can we switch it up? Can we do something new? But as I kind of break down more of the things I did enjoy about this first half, the tone, it was trying a little bit too hard for me to try to be scary. It, it plays better as a thrilling mystery in the first half, more so than when it tried to be scary in the first half for me. And narratively speaking, again, not giving too much away from the plot, but we have this plot involving a substitute teacher that gets involved in Peter's life because, again, only child, he gets picked on in school, she notices this, and she tries to get involved in his life. The parents don't want her to get involved, again, very familiar beats. But the actual teacher of it all, who is played by Cleopatra Coleman, who I'm a big fan of, but I have to report, at least for me, I found her to be extremely disappointing and not her performance per se, but how she was written, how she was presented in a story because she's really just kind of there. She's just kind of caught up in the mix. There's really no purpose or no really like themes or metaphors or really like connection to our characters. So I, again, I don't blame her performance. I blame the script for that character. And then some final points before we get into the good stuff of this movie, I will say that I just wanted a little bit more build up in the horror department in the first half, because again, it plays well in the kind of mystery box of what these parents may or may not have done, what's behind the wall. It's, it's really thrilling and mysterious, but the horror elements are very absent in the first half. 
Now let's switch gears as this film did and talk about the positives. And I want to talk about the director. Samuel Bodine does a really good job. Again, he leans into the mysterious thrilling elements and it builds the tension because once we get into the second half of this movie, my goodness, it's some shocking things that transpire. As I had mentioned up top, this comes from the producers of It and Barbarian. But focusing on Barbarian, which if you haven't seen, check it out. It's a interesting movie for the first two halves and the third act didn't really work for me but neither here nor there check out that review but he does a good job of switching into the horrific side of his story and that transition from the mysterious thrilling thriller film into the horrific horror film that shift is not jarring it is smooth when we get into those elements and it is handled really damn well as well as it has this kind of core line meets Andy Muschietti's mama meets James Wan malignant type of vibes and again when you see the film you'll know what I'm using those films for aesthetically as well as when things transpire and also this is a true definition of a slow burn that does have, for me, a very satisfying conclusion. Now, talking about the performances here in a more positive light, I do want to give props to Anthony Starr, who, like I mentioned up top, I think he is the best like villain on TV in a very long time. Like I have him up there with like Cersei and you know Walter White. Like he is fantastic in the boys. And all my fans of the boys know what Homeland is all about. And Anthony Starr is just Hollywood's best kept secret. And just a side note, if they ever do like a shiny remake, he would be a great Jack. But putting that aside, he's really good in this film. He plays the dad that just has like this calm temper like he just wants to explode at any point and he keeps it kind of tied in into certain points in this film he is excellent in the suspense and kind of mysterious elements of this character but also his wife in this film lizzie kaplan shout out to mean girls also shout out to her being in castle rock season two a very underrated horror film on hulu fantastic performance she's great in this film because she leans on that kind of castle rock character I don't, if you haven't seen castle rock i don't want to say who she plays in that show but she's very very much mysterious and can get to those sinister moments when needed upon in this role so i really enjoy the parents in this film especially going back to my issues with the first half the thing that kept me engaged to some elements were their mysterious sinister natures of them in the first half and then i gotta give props to the young man that plays peter he is played by the young actor by the name of willie norman again i appreciate what he is able to do because the film does rely on his emotional elements to really kind of carry the first half and then when things hit the fan the young man did a pretty good job of making things feel kind of chaotic and crazy and suspenseful and then the film doesn't do what some independent horror films do nowadays, which is kind of rely on allegories, metaphors, which horror is in general is a lot of metaphors and horror and whatnot, but it didn't like rely or lean too heavily or be too on the nose. Like there are some strong themes of like, the, even though I wasn't a fan of the teacher character, there is a plot involving like child endangerment that this film kind of tackles a bit we also have the elements of overprotective parents and thinking they're protecting their son but they're actually kind of pushing their son further away to leaning more towards what's behind the wall so there are some themes that i really enjoy from this narrative let's talk about the good 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 stuff now i'm talking the final 30 minutes of this movie which by the way this film's like an hour and a half it goes by pretty quickly even though the first half is a little bit on the slower side the last 30 minutes is what everyone's going to be talking about, and I'm going to be talking about it right now without spoiling anything. It's almost a completely different film when we get into the final act of this film because about the 40-minute mark, if you ask me, that's when we get our first legit scare, and it's like a dream sequence that I thought was pretty effective. But then the final 30 minutes is what you see this movie for. It builds all to this moment as we see stuff really hit the fan. I had mentioned Barbarian earlier. Think of that and also think of James Wan's Malignant in that police scene. Combine those and you get some of those elements in this third act in the film. And I was here for every single second. It's a straight up bloody massacre and I loved it. The thing that is behind, may or may not be behind the wall, is almost perfect. The voice, the true nature, the design is almost perfect. And I say almost perfect because when you may or may not see a certain face of a certain character, I wish it would have been more practical than CGI. But again, the, the actual behind the wall thing is really great. Like fan freaking tastic. And speaking of fantastic, the final scene, no spoilers, 
it is very effective. It's a speech being said, and I would advise, and if you're a horror fan, you kind of know the vibes, but watch it at nighttime. I'm a night owl. I watch this film like at 12 o'clock at night, and it built to that last scene. It's creepy. It makes you look on the walls and think you're hearing things. Very effective last scene. So those are my pros. Those are my cons. Before I give you all my overall thoughts and my score, if you stuck around to the point of review, I really appreciate you. Just a friendly reminder, if you're enjoying yourself, to hit the thumbs up. Consider sharing today's review. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And, of course, consider subscribing to the channel overall. Now, while I might have had my issues with how things played out with the pacing and kind of the familiar beats of the story in the first half, I do appreciate how it does have an ultimate payoff. It is a true definition of a slow burn because as we get into the third act and we see the film from a different perspective and we understand what was actually going on, it is a very entertaining, bloody good time. And I am going to give Cobb Webb a solid 3.5 out of 5. Now, keep Keep in mind, based on the first half, I'm thinking to myself, watch this movie. Oh, this is like a, you know, two, maybe two and a half. But I'm telling y'all, when you, if you stick around to that third act, it pays off. Because again, it's going to make you look at the film from a different perspective. Because you're going to see, oh, that's why they were doing this, that, and the other. It's, it's a very good payoff for me. And that's, again, why I'm giving this a 3.5 out of 5. But hey, that's my thoughts on this new film. I want to know yours in the comments, your pros, your cons. Did you like the kind of shift in the tone? Did you enjoy the performances? Were you not on board with how things kind of played out? Let's have those conversations in the comments section. Before we wrap this thing up, I want to take this moment to thank you all for watching today's review. If you enjoyed it, make sure you're liking it, sharing it, commenting your thoughts in the comments, and of course, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out my other reviews I've done so far this year. Check out my most recent review, and I'll catch you all on the next breakdown. <laughs>